September is both Ovarian Cancer and PCOS Awareness Month. So today we are talking important facts that you need to know. Dr. Wendy McDonald joins us now with more. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me as always. Let's start with ovarian cancer. Okay. It's one of the cancers that you hear about how dangerous could be, but right. it's also not one of the more prevalent cancers. Is that correct That's statement? That's correct. You okay. know, we think about breast cancer and it's about one in eight people are affected by breast cancer. Ovarian cancer is way less common. Okay. However, it can be extremely aggressive and there's not a great screening tool for it. I was getting ready to say, because by the time you diagnose, you're pretty far along, pretty far right? Advanced. So how do you find out if you actually, in fact, have ovarian cancer? So one of the symptoms is bloating, which who doesn't bloat, right? right? Exactly. Early satiety, meaning you eat and you feel full all up, you know, really quickly. Who doesn't feel that sometimes? But if you have multiple of these symptoms where you feel like your belly is, is increasing in its size or you're just having a hard time eating, it's definitely worth seeing a health care provider. And one of the biggest things that I want people to take away from is family history matters. Okay. Mm. So if you hear of a family member, uncle, aunt, well, not uncle, but aunt, grandparent, distant cousin, who had, say, stomach cancer. Mm. Stomach cancer can be ovarian cancer. Got it, mm. okay. It can be ovarian, it can be uterine, it can be colon, but stomach can be ovarian cancer. So it's really important if you hear of that, or even if you do have family members who have breast cancer, some of the same genes that can mm. cause breast cancer can also cause ovarian cancer. Because that was my next question, is which doctor do you go see when you have those symptoms? Because they can be kind of all over. They can be really, like, nondescript. Yeah. So a gynecologist for sure should be able to work a person up, and ultrasound is a really kind of, like, you know, early thing to mm -hmm. look for. Okay. And I have a very low threshold to order uh, uh, ultrasound because of ovarian cancer being so sneaky. Okay. But it is something that, you know, even in internal medicine, a primary care doctor, if you say, man, I'm having these bloating symptoms, I feel like I can't move my bowels very well, I feel like I'm eating and I'm super full right away, that's worth some imaging. Okay. All right, so can a blood test? detect this? So there is such a test called a CA-125, which is a screening test. It's not a screening test. It's a monitoring test for ovarian cancer. It's actually not a great screening test because it can be positive in other syndromes like endometriosis okay. or even colon cancer. There is another test called OVA-1 where if a person, say, has an ovarian cyst that looks a little weird and we're not sure if it's cancer, we can actually do that test and it'll give us a risk assessment to see if a person is likely to be affected by ovarian cancer, mm. which can steer them into whether or not they need surgery or not. Oh. But there's these, either, even these tests, though, are not like for just the average person without symptoms, without any ovarian pathology, there's not great screening for well, just the general person. Okay, okay. okay so right. let's switch to PCOS. Yes. A lot of people don't even understand what it is. Can yes. you explain it? I can. So PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's essentially where every month our ovaries, when we're ovulating, are supposed to release an egg, one egg a month. When you have PCOS, your ovaries are confused. Like, am I releasing the egg? Are you releasing the egg? And so instead of having the release the, of the egg, you get these small cysts that form every month. And none of them ever actually reach complete maturation. So they create multiple cysts on the ovaries. Well, what that causes in our bodies is kind of a hormonal dysfunction. Mm. People can gain weight. They can have a lot of acne. They can have a lot of hair growth. They may not have all of those symptoms, but it's basically a dysfunction in the regular cycle of our, of our, of our cycles. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest hallmarks of that is that your cycles are irregular. Mm -hmm. Either you're bleeding all the time or you're not bleeding at all mm. because you're not at that like normal cadence of menstrual population. And that of course population. affects your fertility. It affects your fertility. Now the good news is say a person knows they have PCOS or they're diagnosed and if they want to get pregnant there are ways to stimulate the ovaries to release the egg. It's like we can give them a push. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you're not trying to get pregnant it can be a little harder to navigate that like okay. discoordination of the ovaries. So now, does PCOS show up in younger women? Because I, I, some of these symptoms you're talking about, you think about, well, that's also m menopause. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 and adolescence. For right. some people, oh, well, yeah. yeah. especially with the acne, both ends yeah. of the spectrum can be affected by um, those symptoms. But PCOS is usually kind of in the middle. People okay. who are kind of of childbearing age, and uh, hormone tests can help to diagnose it. Um, ultrasound, again, looking for those polycystic ovaries, um, which not everybody has, but you know those can be kind of hallmarks as well. So we. Can can screen for it, especially if we're suspicious. But you're right, there's a lot of overlap. Ovaries overlap with a lot of things. <laughs> okay, and so you say you have a low threshold for ordering an ultrasound. I do. Some doctors have a higher threshold. Yeah. What do you do? Do you go find another doctor? I, I don't. It's a good question. I think because I, I do know that our pelvic organs can be sneaky. That's mm -hmm. why my threshold mm -hmm. is low. Of course, my patient has to understand, hey, this might be normal. Your ovaries might be fine, and you may incur some cost, whether it's a copay, coinsurance, sure. deductible right. for the ultrasound. But I'd rather look and find something or see if there's something there than not look at all. Oh, so boy. it is. It's kind better of a balance. Safe than I think better safe sure. than sorry. So we understand you have a little educational Let's music for us. Some okay. Oh, all Cue right. my music. <laughs> <laughs>
I bet you never heard a rap about ovaries. We docs explain organs like groceries. They should be little and cute like strawberries. And release one egg a month real orderly. Picos create cysts like rosaries. Cycles missing or drag on for weeks. Hormones add to weight or hair to tweeze. Time to come in and check on your hormones, please. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Dr. Wendy. Right. Short and sweet, yes. but to the point, right? And people pay attention to music, girl. Yes, you know they it. They do. Check on your own. Dr. Wendy, as always, you are such a pleasure. Thank and you, you gotta check out her social media handles because she does some great skits with your kids too. Yes. I love it. I love it. And a shout out to the hubby who made the track. Yes. All right. Good job, hubby. All right. Thanks, Dr. Wendy.